So the date is October 10th, 2013. 10, 10, 13. 10, 10, 13. 725 at night. And it is night. It is night. It is very night. It is the darkest I've seen. Um, Drew Sarian and Scott Henson. What's up? We are driving to Seattle like we do on most of our road episodes. This is my third drive to Seattle in four weeks. That's a lot of Seattle. Yeah. That is too much Seattle. I'm just about done with it. Seattle, the gayest uh, city in America? Or is it Washington State, gayest state in America? Uh, Washington could be the gayest state. I think San Fran gets the city award. Well, good thing the two of us are straight. Or as straight as you can be without being full gay. <laughs> yeah, like a, like, a, like a two on the Kinsey scale. That is two out of three. <laughs> I think it's five. <laughs> okay. Um, we are currently on our way to SeaTac. We are going to fly overnight to Dallas, Texas. Where we will be the skinniest people in the airport. By about 200 pounds each. Yeah. And from there we will be flying to Nashville, Tennessee where we will be meeting up with our very good, dear friend, Rigor Mortis, a.k.a. Steve West. Steve West. Where we will be attending his very first pro show in Clarksville, uh, Galaxy Pro, um, where Scott will be involved in a jumbo multi-man. Three-way tag. Oh, there's only three teams? There was four teams. There... There might have been four at one point. Okay. <laughs> We're at three right now. Um, Who knows what happens come come game day. Yeah. And I will be taking on my second mortal enemy that's not Chris Frank. <laughs> um, look, only He's only second because he's never directly kicked me in the balls Who intentionally. Full on in the balls. Uh, that would be Davey Vega. Um... That will be Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Today is Thursday, so on our way down we decided we would talk wrestling. And for the next 48 hours. <laughs> All the way through. Until the show. Actually, it was 72 hours, Jesus. 72 hours, that's a lot of wrestling. Oh boy, I hope my phone's got battery. That's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll alternate back and forth while we charge them. There you go. Um, so I guess there's a decent amount to talk talk about. Uh, first of all... Oh, so just before we get off it, speaking of the Galaxy Pro Show, no. um, where where are you on the card on said show? Uh, I may or may not be main eventing the card. Hmm. And how many indie shows have you main evented? Are we counting Seattle? Yes. One. <laughs> Wait, main evented? Oh, main evented? Yeah. No. How many Zero. You, how many have you main evented? Zero. How many have you been on? One. All right. So this is a this is a meteoric rise in popularity. Your second show ever, you're main eventing. I this feel like maybe I'm a very young Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> the natural. At Royal Rumble. Or a Fandango at WrestleMania. Uh... Granted, it's not like this is my second match ever. Oh, it's not. I thought it was. No. Okay. I've had three, <laughs> but one of them was in my basement with what all the it? with all the cushions off the couches, and Kelly and I had a match. I was gonna say it was against the stuffed animal. <laughs> yeah. Kelly and I were the Steiners, and the stuffed animals were the Wild Samoans. <laughs> um, I'm not thrilled about it. I'm not angry about it. I'm just really nervous about it. <laughs> Because, for all intents and purposes, Davey Vega is a professional wrestler. I am a yard tart. <laughs> so, we'll see how this goes. Josh is going to have to have, sorry, Davey is going to have to have a very strong back because he's going to be doing a lot of carrying. Just remember to jump when he lifts you. <laughs> no, I'm sandbagging like I did Kelly. <laughs> um, but yes... I will be main eventing, all, unless things, of course, change. They could, who knows. But I, I'm glad that Steve has the faith in me to put me in the main event. Um, I guess it was by circumstance that I had requested to wrestle 
Davey, Josh, whatever, because he was the one guy who I had never wrestled that I wanted to, and Steve was able to make that happen, and Josh just happens to be Steve's number one heel. Yeah. So I guess it kind of just happened out that way. Which again, which again prevents you from working heel, which you want to. <laughs> which is all I wanted to. Although I will say, after the Seattle show, we're pretty good. I was pretty good with being a face. Yeah. So, as much as I generally hate being a face, it was fine. I didn't, I didn't have too many issues with it. Um. So yeah, it will be a six-man show, a six-man card, six six match, match card. card. I think is what we're looking for. <laughs> That's there. what I'm looking for <laughs> on Sunday. Um. Now, we're being very hopeful that after we wrestle on Sunday, that we will be able to make it back to the house we're staying at in by order midnight. by midnight in order to watch the New Japan pay-per-view. Yes. Uh, the, does this pay-per-view have a name? Um, yeah, it's... What's the, uh, the October one? Because the October one is their... It's probably their number three show of the year. So the January Dome show is number one, and probably the G1 finals in August are number two. And this is probably number three, because they're, they're definitely trying to make it big. It was really big last year. It had a five-star match on it last year. Um, Tanahashi versus uh, Minoru Suzuki. Um, I, I think it's called Kings of... Kings of Wrestling? Or, uh, or King of Sport? It's something like that. Because I know that the January one is Wrestling Kingdom. Um, yeah, so it's something like that for the October show. Okay. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely trying to make it big again this year by... Kind of a surprising main event stemming from the last one, seeing as they've done this main event, uh, what will be by the show four times uh, this year already. Which I get, which you know is their number one match. Um, Are they running by WWE standards? They seem to be on. Same least. guy gets a title shot uh, multiple times in a year. Yeah, but these aren't back to back. Is That's the difference. True. That's true. It's not. Um, it's not Orton and Danielson four times in a row. Um, yeah, so uh, Kazuchika Okada defending against uh, Tanahashi, who I wouldn't have guessed would be the next challenger. He got a big win on the last week where he got like this decisive win over uh, Prince Devon. But uh, yeah, they've done Tanahashi Okada three times already. They did it. It was the main event at the January show. It was then uh, where Tanahashi retained the title, and then. Uh, Okada beat Tanahashi for the title in April, which was a five-star match. Uh, then they had a 30-minute draw in the G1 Climax in August. So stemming from that, they've made a billion stipulations for this match. Um, Tanahashi recently won a title in CMLL in Mexico, the Universal title, which sounds like their number one title, but it's not. It's a secondary heavy, heavyweight title? Yeah, called the Universal title. <laughs> Because their big ones are like the our other weight class, like the welterweight and the light heavyweight are like the big oh, okay. titles. Um, so yeah, so Tanahashi is also putting that up, so that we're gonna we'll get both titles. Uh, I guess there was talk of them doing a 60-minute draw. So to quell that, Okada stated that if they go to a 60-minute draw, he's vacating the title. <laughs> And, uh, oh, and then on top of that, so, so now you think, oh, Okada will retain. And, but now add the other wrinkle that uh, Tanahashi has said, if he doesn't win, he's never challenging for the title again. <laughs> the so, old sting TNA step. Yeah, so this, yeah, the steps on this are bonkers, but the match will be awesome because it is every well, time. Well, yeah, obviously. I hope it'll be amazing. Yeah, I, I hope they just do... I actually, I hate to say I haven't seen their draw from August, even though it's supposed to be great. Uh, but if they do the same thing they did in April, I, I'll i be satisfied. I'll be satisfied with them having another five-star match. Because <laughs> their their match in January, we were, we were super psyched for, because it was like the main event of their WrestleMania. Arguably, their two best guys. Uh, they worked great together, because they had a killer match in June 2012. Um, so they're like, all right, they're going to, you know, it's WrestleMania, they're going to go all out. It was really good. It was like a four and a quarter, four and a half star match. But it's, you know, high standards when a four and a half star match, arguably, doesn't live up to your expectations. Um, it just felt like they could have, they needed, well, it would have been more interesting for Okada to win. 
and it just seemed like they needed another near fall or two at the end. It was just basically, they did their finishing stretch, Tanahashi hit something, frog splash, done. Um, but then the, the April match was what we were expecting for the January match. The April match, they absolutely killed it, and Okada won, and uh, yeah, and it was great. Hey, it was awesome. Yeah. Have you have you seen what have you seen? Have you seen either of them? Uh, I've seen the April one. You've seen the April one. Okay. I've seen the April one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't really start watching it until around there. around then. Yeah. So uh, I'm uh, I'm very new to the world of Japanese wrestling because before I I guess because growing up and not being really introduced to it or around it at all, I didn't really know anything about it until. Yeah. Recent, like more recently, I knew I knew who guys were, and I had obviously knew all the ones that had come to North America, had done WCW and stuff. Yeah. But uh, I wasn't really involved in in anything, and then I guess that one show when I came to watch it at your house yeah. was really what kind of got me into it. Yeah. I, I'd seen a few because they're obviously, I mean, Kelly's really into it as well, so yeah. he would always be like, "Oh, come watch this match." So we'd watch it on his computer, and I'd be like, "Yeah, that's good. I, I'm just not really interested." Just not that into it. Yeah. But now it's like. Now I would much rather watch that than I would than I would much rather watch anything else. So. For sure, yeah. Um. Just because, because I can't uh, overstate enough how much they are killing it right now. Yeah, like, and it's also for me it's it's a lot different than what I'm used oh, it's to. So different. Yeah. So for me it's almost like I'm I'm getting into wrestling again. Yeah, it's like a brand new thing because I'm so used to the E and yeah. and watching like old WCW and stuff, which is like you know a very North American style, and then and it's very formulaic and you know what's happening and everything and for the most part I can watch a Raw and almost exactly predict what's happening and everything Yeah. whereas this is is it's like I feel like the way that they portray it is they almost make it as if anything could happen and it's yeah. more real more realistic than, than the North American stuff Yeah. so it's for me it's like I'm watching something new yeah I'm getting back into it yeah which is really cool yeah um, but I will say as far as you saying that they're the two best workers in Japan, that's your opinion. My my opinion is the two best workers in the company are Shibata and Goto when they fight each other. And, you know, that's tough to argue because <laughs> they have destroyed it. And, oh, because um, that is my favorite match of all time now. It's, yeah, it's pretty rad. That was, uh, that was their second one. That was June this year. And, uh, yeah, they killed it. Um, yeah, I, I would have no problem saying top five were... Uh, Tanahashi, Okada, Shibata, Goto, and my fucking boy, Tomohiro Ishii. Goddamn. Ishii's pretty good. Did he kill shit in the G1 Climax in uh, in August? In the, what was it, day two? He And he's, um, people like him, like the crowd likes him, but he is, as far as booking status, he's a mid-card. Yeah. And, uh, but obviously they have faith in his wrestling, because... Uh, for day two of the G1, they put him versus Tanahashi as the main event, and uh, and it was amazing. And Ishii beat him, and the crowd lost their fucking minds. <laughs> so yeah, I would I would say those would probably be my five, my fave five for uh, for New Japan right now. So uh, and uh, speaking of Ishii, he will not be on this pay per view because I think he's still in Mexico. Uh, when he comes back, the first pay-per-view match he's doing, which is already booked uh, for the next one, it's which I don't know because they're doing like a semi-pay-per-view at the end of October, then a real pay-per-view in November. So I think it's for November. Uh, they're doing him versus uh, Kota Ibushi, uh, who just who just signed with New Japan while remaining signed with DDT. So he is contracted to both companies, which is weird. <laughs> Is that sort of like a, a first-time thing in Japan? It's unusual. Like, not a lot of guys work It's several companies? Pe freelancers do, but they're not signed to they're anyone. They're not signed, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually can't name anyone who's been signed to two companies at the same time. Crazy. So it's very weird. But yeah. um, I guess New Japan knows they nothing will suffer by him doing remaining, both doing his thing at DDT. So they're just like, they're probably just like, fine. Because DDT is no threat to New Japan. New Japan's so much bigger. Yeah. So, and it's cool, because I'm glad he still gets to work his home, you know, his original home fed, too. So, yeah, they, they had set up Ishii and uh, Ibushi in, at the end of the G1 Climax, because two guys got hurt, Tenzan and Goto, regrettably. Uh, Goto, the day before, he would have had the rematch with Shibata. No! Yeah. 
Um, and so the two guys who were against them, were who were scheduled against them on the last day, were Ishii and um, Ibushi. So we thought they might do them in a singles match. They ended up doing them on opposite sides of a six-man, and and they clearly built to a singles from that six-man. So they are going to do that. So that's cool. That sounds and that'll really be, good. It'll be really good. Interesting, like style uh, meshing between the two, because like Ishii's like stocky hard hitter takes a lot of punishment guy and Ibushi's a femi little flipper <laughs> but I think they're going to work really well together is there any other way to describe them than that not really <laughs> uh, I always get so sad when I remember the story about uh, the, the I guess Evolve 1 the first Evolve show where <laughs> Davy Richards intentionally made him cry <laughs> Aww, that's terrible I know such a shit Davy Davey Richards is such a dick <laughs> he's such a dick uh, so, yeah, so what else on the card I'm doing from memory because we're in America and I don't want to use American data on my phone. Because that's expensive as shit. Because it's expensive. Um, so what do we got? So we got um, uh, Tetsuya Naito, who has sort of the money in the bank, basically. He has a guaranteed title shot at the Dome show in January by, by way of winning the G1. Uh, he's wrestling a you know, former tag partner, now enemy, uh, Yujiro uh, Takahashi. And, uh, and I think he's putting the title shot up, and it's, it's a foregone conclusion. Who's winning? <laughs> Naito's Ni- mm-hmm. definitely getting the shot. Yeah. Well, uh, I, well sorry, before I cut you off, I forgot that I was going to ask, uh, who do you think's winning the main event? That is a good question. Um, I would like Okada to win. Because because uh, we just the finals of the G1 were Tanahashi and Naito, mm-hmm. um, and um, so we, we just it was very good. We just saw it um, last time we saw Okada Naito. It was it was Okada's first title defense after winning it completely by surprise in early 2012, and uh, he was totally unproven because like. He, his title win was okay, but whatever, and he was super young, uh, super inexperienced in the main event. Um, and then his first defense was against Naito, another young guy has not, has, I think he's had one world title match before, and they fucking killed it! And it, like, it literally made both guys, like, in the case of Okada, it made him forever. Yeah. Um, just because he has not looked back since that match. Hmm. Um, and Naito, probably Naito also, but he got hurt later that year and was out for eight months um, but he's back and doing his thing again um, so yeah but the and I would say Okada was going to win if not for the fucking Tanahashi step where he says he's never going to challenge again if he loses and I'm like well he has the challenge he's basically the ace of the company so yeah. I don't like it's almost like they gave the finish away unless they're trying to trick me or something uh, do they do a lot of like like you know bullshit schmozzes? No. So you're not, it wouldn't... Neg- not, not, not in the main event world title match. Okay. They, they do it in a, in like a heel Devitt match in the middle. So they haven't been watching me? No. Okay. No, they, they've had a, uh, a rash of, uh, of clean finishes in the main events. Well, that's terrible. Who wants to see that? I know. Even the heel wins clean sometimes. What? I know. I don't think they understand wrestling, Scott. They don't. They don't get it. They, They're uh, doing it wrong. They need to, uh, open their eyes. <laughs> Well, I don't know if they can. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so and then in the the second match we talked about, who do you yes. think who do you think will win that one? Uh, the foregone conclusion, Naito. Naito, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. No, no question. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, last pay per view was Naito uh, Masato Tanaka. Masato Tanaka has oh. like an uh, undercard title, the Never title, mm-hmm. um, which he put up against Naito's title shot. Naito won. So I think Naito's defending the Never title and his title oh, shot. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so oh. he's definitely winning. Sato Tanaka, still one of my favorites. Yeah. Will and, always be one of my favorites. And in better shape than... Than like, ECW. Than ECW. Yeah. yeah, yeah it was crazy. a little more... He was a little more stocky and muscular, yeah. though. Now he's kind of just... He's a little more juiced. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a thinner, like, more cut. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? We got the... It was going to be the tag titles, which are uh, Tanahashi, Tanahashi, Tenzan, and Kojima defending against perennial opponents, uh, Davy Boy Jr. and uh, Lance Archer. However, in the main event of last pay-per-view, on the finish, uh, 
Kojima decided, in challenging for the world title against Okada, decided to take the Rainmaker, Lariat, like a lunatic, and separated the shoulder. <laughs> oh my god. And, and Kojima was also the, the tag champs with Tenzan. Right. So it's Tenzan and a rookie against the uh, against the white guys. So for the, what, the tag title still? No. Just a tag match. Just, just a tag match. It might be for the NWA tag titles, actually, because the white guys have those. That's horrible. So white guys probably win. Was that so, was that more of a, like, we let well, we let Rob Conway come wrestle for you, so you let them come wrestle for us kind of deal? I think largely that, yeah. Gross. Uh, that sounds about right. Uh, what else we got? Junior tag titles uh, was going to be champions uh, Alex Kozlov and Rocky Romero against uh, Alex Shelley and Kushida who won a number one contenders match and set them up for their sixth match against uh, Kozlov and Romero in 12 months uh, but Shelley got hurt which is the bummer because I love Alex Shelley uh, so the guys they beat in the number one contenders match are getting the title shot uh, which we've also seen a couple months ago uh, Takama Chinoku and uh, Taichi so, uh, who are um, who are strong heels, um, and technically cause off and Romero heels, but last time they essentially turned face for the match um, and worked face, so they probably will again. Now, my knowledge of Taka Mishinoku is limited to WWF. Okay. To me, it is ridiculous that he is still an active wrestler. I mean, yeah. he's not that old. But that was so long ago it was, he was, that you really, really, like, I really go, like, I cannot believe he's still an active, yeah. like, in a main company, too. Yep. Yeah. The biggest company. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy to me that he's yeah. still an active guy. Yeah. And he's, he's still good. Like, he's not, like, the no-hand springboardy guy he used to be. But, yeah. um, he's still athletic, and he can still work. Um, and he's a great heel. So, uh, yeah. And I, he was, he was very young when he was in WWE. Yeah. Yeah. He was like early 20s. Um, so that would put him, uh, I guess, 60. Yeah, so, th- you know, 37, 38 now. Yeah. Which is about what he looks. Yep. Uh, so we got that. What else do we got? I am uh, regrettably blanking Eight on... Eight-man tag. Yeah, there's an eight-man uh, bullet club. So it'll be... Uh, Anderson. De- Devin Anderson. Devin. Uh, bad luck, fail... And uh, Tamatonga against uh, Togi Makabe, Hanma, Captain New Japan, and I. Last I remember, a mystery fourth partner, um, but I don't know if that's been filled yet. Um, so yeah, that could go either way. The Bullet Club's just been like exchanging wins um, back and forth with faces. I uh, De- Devitt's a sweet heel, but. He definitely hasn't been having the, like, caliber of matches he was having when he was a face because of all the heel shit. Right. So... It takes away from his ability? Yeah. Is it maybe too... Well, I guess I can't really say it, but a lot of the heels he was facing were really good. Yeah. And they've kind of been... I, I, as far as I understand, like, when the Bullet Club's got matches and he's involved, they're kind of like facing a little bit lesser of opponents. Yeah. Um, unless, because he has had a couple singles with uh, Tanahashi, so right. nothing... Right. No, but I'm saying when he's yeah. doing Bullet Club bullshit. Yeah. I mean, Captain New Japan, so... Captain New Japan. <laughs> like, that's all you need to say, really. Yeah. Velvet bodysuit. <laughs> Love it. The, the dumbest idea. <laughs> uh, I was, I was going to say before, I'm blanking on what Nakamura's IC title defense is. Shelton yeah. Benjamin. No, that was last month, so it's not... Shelton that. Benjamin again. I don't think it's Shelton Benjamin again, but what if... I think it's something good, but... Fuck if I can remember. Um, then well, I think it's... Is, uh, is there any... Uh, I think it's a Nagata Sakuraba singles again. I was going to say, is there any Nagata stuff? Cause... And I'm sure Shibata's on it, oh. but I don't... Uh, it, I... I'm hesitant to say it's Nakamura Shibata, although that would be great. That would be amazing. I yeah. would really like to see that. Fuck, and I just realized I left Nakamura out of my top five, mm. which I don't think I should. So who's out? <sighs> Regrettably, Goto. I hate you. I'm sorry. We're not friends anymore. I know. Just just let me off here. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> slow down on the highway here. Tuck and roll. Yeah. Yeah, I, if yeah, if I had to move someone from the five, I guess it'd be. That's the thing is, like, it, it's tough it. though. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get off too off topic here, but 
I don't want to get off on a rant here, Chachi, but... Uh, if, if I was to say to you, who are your top five current WWE wrestlers, I feel like you would have to struggle. Oh, yeah. But for for New Japan, I feel like it could be, who's your top ten, yeah, and New you J- could do ten. Yeah, ten would be easy. I can do ten right now. The five I said, originally, Nakamura, Devitt, Shelley, uh, what's that, that's eight... I feel like I'm missing uh, Maybe Kojima He's been real good lately And uh, oh, uh, oh Oh fuck I'm forgetting tons of people Fucking Carl Anderson Minoru Suzuki Minoru Suzuki Both of those are easily in my top ten Kojima's out There we go Okay Tanahashi Okada Devin Shelly Nakamura Goto Ishii Shibata And the other ones I said <laughs> I thought I could get through it But I could But yeah. I, th- I think even I can do a top ten of Japan New Japan wrestlers now, whereas before I couldn't. Before I couldn't yeah. even do top two. <laughs> um, I don't know. Talking about Yogi still there? Well, I, guess, I guess he's my number one. He's still got Liger, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Yuji Nagata, fuck me. There's so many people. There's uh, so many good people in New Japan. I can't even believe it. Nagata's so good. Fuck. Yeah, see, now I'm struggling to cram everyone into ten. Whereas if I have to name top ten in WWE, it's got fuck. try and try and do top five. Top five. Of wrestlers you actually like, not just like, eh, I guess so and so. Yeah, okay. I can I, I think I can I can I can do five. I can do five. Uh Amdrag. Punk. Yeah, oh, I, got, I got my five right now. Amdrag, Punk, uh, Claudio, Rollins, Ziggler. There you go. So I can do five. Ten's a stretch. Ten also, ten oh, also does Gold Dust count because he's number one. Well, he's the best worker in the company. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um so we're assuming that there's some kind of Sakuraba Nagata thing. I th- yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Sakuraba Nagata. Um, I don't remember Shibata, and I don't remember Nakamura. That might mean they're against each other, which is awesome. It might not. They might have two separate matches. Okay. So I could not uh, tell you that. Overall, the card sounds really good. Very good card. There's yeah. nothing on that card that doesn't look like a good yeah. match on paper. S- super strong main event. Lots of good undercard. It's going to be a really good show. I'm, I'm super excited, and I hope we can get out of the show real fast. Yeah, I hope we get to see it. Worst case, uh, we'll watch it with Dan, with Dan when we get back. Do we have but to? it would be kind of fun to watch it here without Dan. <laughs> and then when he asks us if we want to watch it again, we say no? Yeah. Crush, yeah. crush your dreams. Yeah, of course. Return them the favor. <laughs> Pay it forward. Pay it forward. <laughs> so, um, oh shit, you know what? Is Sunday also... No, is Sunday also bad for glory? Uh, no, one more week. There's one more week? Ah, yeah, oh, boo. I'd, for, I'd give up on New Japan for Bad for Glory. I would. Bad for Glory. I, I, I do much. demand to watch a pay-per-view of some sort every time we're in Tennessee. Because last time we watched uh, One Night Stand 2008. <laughs> That's unfortunate for you. Uh, I remember one thing, and it was good. The rest was probably garbage. Um, it, was the, it was the Taker Edge uh, TLC. Ah. Which is pretty good. Um but couldn't tell you anything else in the show. I feel like Tommy Dreamer was against a stupid... I feel like Tommy Dreamer, Bobby Lashley, or something ridiculous. Really? Yeah. Was it Orlando Jordan versus the Bull of Dicks? Uh, that is a match he usually wins. Well, wins or loses, because... Depends how you... They know. win, too, but he also wins? It's mutually beneficial. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. The uh, I don't know if you've seen on, uh, on one of the message boards, there's like a... Teenage Australian yarder who uh, who Orlando Jordan has been hitting on through Facebook, and he's posting like Orlando Jordan's posts. Wow, it's amazing. That's creepy. Yeah. Does Orlando Jordan want to go to jail? I guess. He'd, we'd love it there. I guess he figures it's Australia. So oh yeah, I <laughs> far guess. Far enough away. I guess. That's really creepy. Good work, super, Orlando Jordan. Super creepy. Anyway. Just wait until whoever Linda McMahon's running against next time gets a hold of that. Yeah. Well, you guys employed a child molester. <laughs> Look, we've employed a lot of people who have done a lot of a things. Lot of child molesters. You just know about this one. We employed a guy who hired his friends to help him cover up the murder of his girlfriend. Yeah. A guy once fucked our 13-year-old daughter. Yeah, speaking of child molester. So, solid pay-per-view from New Japan. But it's kind of a standard, isn't it? Everything's good they do? They, I can't remember the last time I've said that was a bad pay-per-view. 2001. 
probably probably when when half the shows were uh, either real or fake MMA matches. <laughs> now, I recently, with the help of Scott, That's me. got several channels of television that I didn't have before. Yes. Which now gives me the availability to watch Raw and SmackDown every week, if I so choose. And by watch, I mean watch Raw. Plow through on Fast Forward. Fast Forward through SmackDown at the fastest setting. And not really miss anything. Yeah. Uh, I also have the ability to watch NXT. Yep. And I still have the uh, availability to ignore Impact. Yes. Because I have stopped paying attention to it altogether because it is horrible. It's not good. Um, now, with with the way that the E's been going, um, we watched Raw as a group on Monday for probably the first time in ever. I don't think we've ever all watched Raw together. It's been a while, yeah. Now, I'll give you my opinion on how I feel that this is going, and then you can tell me I'm wrong. Sure. And give me your opinion. So, the whole Stephanie and Triple H thing, and the storyline of what's best for business, and, you know, stacking the deck on Daniel Bryan, and using the shield as their, their, uh, <coughs> lackeys, and humiliating the big show, and I know a lot of people, uh, think that it's really bad right now, I mean, I've been watching some version of WWF WWE since I was, I think, four or five. And I have seen it much worse than it is. Yep. It's not great, but to me, the way I look at it is, I feel like Steph and Trips are... They have a very large hand in what actually goes on now. Yeah. It wasn't before where they sort of were in, but Vince was the main one. Like, Vince is there. But I feel like the two of them really have control of what goes on. Uh, As much as, you know, Triple H has been labeled as a huge dick by a lot of people, and a lot of people don't like him, um, I do do think he has a very good grasp of, as far as their product, what they need to do to make their product watchable to a certain um, group of people. I mean, their target is obviously not you and me, or our friends who would be listening to this. Their target is, you know, kids to a, a certain age, let's say maybe 18, yeah. and then really dumb, uneducated older people yeah. who, who live in a certain region that we may be traveling, may to. traveling to. And what's funny is that's the majority of their audience is older even though they, there's so much stuff they cater yeah, to kids. Yeah, absolutely. But that's because they do have a very large diehard fan base. Yeah. Right? Their fan base is people who have been watching forever, and that's really all that they have, a lot of them, right? I mean, a lot of them, you know, so some people will have, you know, some people go to the gym, and that's their thing. Some people, you know, play sports, that's their thing. Or, you know, some people are really into school, right? Or they, yeah. or they, they, they live to work. And then some people just have, like, wrestling is their thing, right? Yeah. They, 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 they love to watch every single episode every week. You know, they like following the storylines. They have their favorites. They have the people they hate. I'm sure that there are, at some places in, in the uh, States, there's a lot of people who probably still think it's real or think that it's mostly real. Yeah. You know, they have that illusion or they, they choose to ignore the illusion that it's not totally acting. And, yeah. You know, but I do feel like Triple H has a pretty decent grasp on what they need to do as a company to appeal to their main target audience. He's not there to appease the the, the critical wrestling fans who no. understand wrestling and the business and like who's a good worker, who's a shitty worker, yeah, no, what's no. not working, what's working. They're not there to appease us. They're there to appease that that fan base. Yeah. So for me, watching over the last few uh, months, um, as much as I absolutely think that the Big Show storyline is stupid 
and, you know, like, making him, constantly making him cry, and, and, and kind of proving that he's this gentle, soft giant, and he's, you know, he's not really mean, like, they're kind of, I, I said this to you, like, a couple days ago, I feel like this is the most over he's ever been. He's really over. Because now they're kind of taking him away from this big, like, giant who kind of was a jobber for the last few years. I mean, he's not really done a lot. Nope. And I feel like now they've kind of turned him into this sympathetic human, and it's sort of giving him the, the, the giving the fans the feeling of like you know this is a guy who gets mistreated, but he deep down just wants to be a good guy. He wants to he wants to make uh, the fans happy. He doesn't want to have to listen to you know an authority figure that's telling him to do something he doesn't want to do. And I feel like they're really pulling out like, what Big Show can do, which is he's actually a pretty decent actor, right? He is, like, such a good promo. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good uh, he's a good talker, and he's got good emotions, yeah. right? I mean, he can fucking cry on command. Yeah, right? I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't know if hardly anyone else in the Fed can no, do that. No, exactly, right? And, I mean, they have definitely pulled out of him. Which begs the question, why was Knucklehead so bad? Well, because it was supposed to be a comedy, yeah. but it wasn't. Um, but I, I feel like you know, obviously he's got a very good rapport backstage with the guys. I mean, he's been there forever. Yeah. Uh, he, he's obviously got a good relationship with uh, management, and and Triple H and him, I would assume, are pretty good friends. I think so, yeah. And so he realizes, like, you know, let's give him the chance to really run with something, right? I mean, sure, they just sort of wrote him off, like, you know, fired him. Presumably he'll be oh, yeah. on Raw next, like, you know, on Monday, probably. Probably. Um, but I feel like they're 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 making him back into like a main eventer, like he should be. Because I, I you know, they, you, you cycle through main eventers and guys who, um, you know, they get stale and people lose interest, and then yeah. they, they cycle them out, right? But realistically, Big Show, being the biggest athlete in the world, uh, in air quotes, yeah. Um, well, he still probably is. Cully's taller, but he's not an athlete. He's a walking stick. He is, he is the living corpse of Great Cully. Yeah, yeah. And so, Big Show, by all means, should be either a main eventer, or he should be a guy who's who's got an established high position in the in the world of in the company in like in kayfabe land. Yeah, should be you know. I've, granted, he's older and he's a little bit more beat up than he was in previous years, but he's still huge, yeah. right? Like, he still should be a dominant force no matter what, but it seemed to me like all he did for a couple of years was flounder around and job and then be off TV for a while yeah. and, you know, have stupid storylines that went nowhere. So it is nice for them to see that they're actually giving him something to do that's meaningful to the show, yeah. right? Like, he is a... You know, once you get past the Daniel Bryan thing, he's pretty much the main focus of the company, yeah. right? Because Daniel Bryan's whole storyline is the number one thing, but he's involved in it, which kind of makes him right up there, right? Num- number one adjacent. Number one adjacent, exactly. Yeah. And then, and so, and then, as as well as Big Show, um, the whole road storyline. Um, I, I, I very much I, I like it I don't know how you feel about it I think it's great I, I really like the storyline yeah um, and, and the and the well the one main match it's produced so far was fantastic mm-hmm. and the thing that I liked about it too is um, you know I never thought they'd bring back Goldust because the last time he was in the company we had all said uh, he's the best like he's the best worker in the company he was so good like he is really good and oh, the yeah. thing too is we we're saying like he, we're, we're kind of tongue in cheek when we say he's the best worker in the company yeah but he's, but he's like clearly he's not Daniel Bryan and CM Punk is, is better than are the best us. workers in the company right but there's something one there's something super likable about all of us two like for his age and like shit he's been through like in a way like pound for pound he is one of the best wrestlers and the thing is he's, he's consistent he doesn't really botch anything. No, he... Right? Yeah. He, he hits his spots. Yeah, he can work. He doesn't blow anything. Yeah. You know, you can put him in there with most guys, and he's, he's able to work yeah. them. He's about 50 pounds down from when he was Black Rain. Yeah, exactly. He's black rain. And less addicted to prescription drugs. Yeah. But. So, and, and he looks fine. Yep. Um, so, it, it's nice to have him back. And then, um, that, that Dusty Rhodes promo with Stephanie McMahon was, yeah. was really good. 
Yeah. I loved everything they played about that that promo. Um, the the only, the one there, there are two parts about the the, the little storyline that I don't really like. Um, I do like the realism of bringing in, you know, the, he's bringing in the dad and, and having him be involved. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's a little. I, I don't really like when they go too deep into it and they're ringing out like because clearly the whole uh, if you've ever seen the Dusty Rhodes DVD and Dustin talks about how uh, when he was married to uh, Ter- Terry yeah. um, and she wasn't feeling good or whatever and, and he told his dad that he wasn't going to go fishing with him he was going to stay home and look after his sick wife and then Dusty didn't talk to him for 10 years <laughs> um, obviously that's a real thing that's got you know it a real hurt in, in Dustin at some point in his life. Yeah. And it's and I, I didn't really like the fact that they were bringing up something that... Like, I could see if they br- br- brought it up and it wasn't something as serious as that. You know, just like, oh, you know, he was always on the road and he was never there looking after you. And yeah. you were raised by your mom and he wasn't there. But then you're bringing up something that was actually, like, physically, emotionally draining and stressful on your life. Yeah. I'm sure, obviously, they said that they were fine talking about it. Yeah. But for me as a fan, I kind of felt that a Just little uncomfortable. Kind of uncomfortable, yeah. Because you're like, oh, like at some point in Dustin's life, that was the worst thing that ever happened yeah. to him. And now you're bringing it back up, even though they're aware that you're bringing it up, you know? Yeah. It's not to the same degree, but it's the same as like bringing up dead people. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and then the other part, on, so that's the serious part of the angle I didn't like. The part of the angle I didn't like that was not as serious as the fact that you you're referring to him as Dustin yeah. and you're talking to him to his face as Dustin. He's wearing a suit. He's wearing a suit, but he still has the gold dust face paint on. Because he's a pro. <laughs> well I get that he's a pro, but you're seriously like you're telling me Oh no, it it detracts from it. I, I guess I guess I get that that if you're billing him as gold dust, you don't want him without the face paint on. For the purpose of the of the angle, it would make more sense if he was just Dustin Rhodes and no face paint. Exactly. And, and the thing is, it's not like if he's wrestling as Dustin, it's not like he can't do all of the gold dust moves yeah. and, and act and have the same mannerisms as gold dust yeah. just because he's wrestling under his real name. Now, the only difference is he'd have to wear, like, you know, street clothes. Yeah. He'd have to wrestle in jeans and a cutoff. And I, I would like to hope cowboy boot wrestling boots and knee pads over the jeans Absolutely. because that's the road staple yes um but that's the only other thing of the angle i didn't like is because it's kind of dumb yeah um but, but on, on the flip side his face paint and gear is fucking sweet oh yeah his darth maul face paint i lost that was great yeah because I, I didn't see the pay-per-view match before yeah. when i saw raw and i was like oh he's doing darth maul now you're like yeah i'm like that is pretty sweet yeah um not very topical though because how long ago was Star Wars? Uh, the first one was 1999. Yeah, 99. I was gonna say 98. 99. Um, now, the the I think the personally the best part of this angle that I like is the fact that they took a guy like Cody Rhodes, who's a good worker. Yep. You know, he, he seems like he's a pretty good company guy. He's done everything they've asked him to do. Yep. Whether it's grow a mustache or wear that stupid face vi- face visor for the longest time. Yep. And they took a guy like Cody Rhodes, who, for the most part, mid Carter at best. Yeah. Intercontinental title, maybe throw him a random tag team partner like Sandow. Yeah. You know, kind of toil and obscurity. And they've actually kind of given him a little bit more of a push that, that to kind of take him out of that and give him like a main focus. Yeah. Which, which is good to see that they're actually developing guys in the company who deserve it, yeah. right? Like, for a guy like Drew McIntyre, because we talked about this on Raw, and Vince brought him in, and he was supposed to be his golden boy, yeah. and he was he was labeled to be a top main event uh, uh, world champion, and he was not really a great worker. He's not great on the mic. Other than being tall and kind of in shape, like a good sh- in good yeah. shape, about it. he's very mediocre at best. Yeah. And so his push didn't last, and he floundered. But you got a guy like Cody Rhodes who's going out there and having really good mid-card matches every time he's out there. You give him a push, you give him a decent storyline, and it kind of brings him up to that next level. So now people might might accept him having a title match. Yeah, and, and or ex- expect him to maybe win a title match. Sure. And you know, you talk about Big Show maybe being the most over he's ever been. This is easily the most over Cody's ever been. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I, I can pinpoint the, hopefully not 
the peak, but the peak so far, hopefully it sustains and it remains over, but the finish of the tag at the, uh, the pay-per-view last week, where he hit the best crossroads ever, largely due to uh, Seth Rollins' Sullivan, where they did the entire spin mid-air, because they both just jumped and then spun, which was amazing. Um, when he, and like, he was super intense going into because he like, he came in, hit something, and then boom, grab, crossroads, great selling the crossroads, like, clearly the finish, there was no question he was pinning it there. Crowd exploded for him. Yeah. And like, I've never heard him get a pop like that. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's not just pushing the old boys like they've been doing forever. Now, I mean, that being said, I don't know how many more Alberto Del Rio matches I can watch, but, <laughs> um, He's still the world champion, isn't he? Yes, he is. Can they stop having a world champion? That's the thing, is they really should, but I think for them, the idea behind it is that if you have a secondary heavyweight title that maybe means a little bit less, then that way you can just shove it onto SmackDown, and yeah. it's a title match on SmackDown, or it's something early in a pay-per-view that people can kind of care about, because they'll be like, oh, maybe we'll get a title change tonight, or you know, it should be a good match. Yeah. But uh, the way I look at it is, because... Um, RVD's contract has expired. Yeah. And probably not resigning. Probably not resigning because it sounds like he's very unhappy with the way that this most recent run went. And I don't blame him. And because it's not his fault at all, he was he was pretty over. The fans were kind of getting really behind him. Uh, he sold a lot of merchandise, a lot of shirts. I bet, yeah. Um, the unfortunate thing for him is that he got stuck in the feud with Alberto Del Rio. Now, Del Rio is not a bad one. But to me, I feel like a lot of the time, he mails it in. And he just doesn't generally give a shit. Yeah, I get that. Because I think he kind of understands that he's the secondary champion. Yeah. Right? He, like, he got he got the really big push when he first came. They built him up really well. He's coming in as a, a you know, for the wrestling purists, he came in as a pretty big name. People knew who he was. He had a good reputation. Yep. Right? He's one of the top five best Mexican wrestlers. Yeah, he's big in Mexico. Right? Like, he's a good wrestler. And they came in, and it just seems like now he just, you know, his... I feel like every time I watch him, he's just lazily doing his spots. Yeah. He's not really selling that well. And then I noticed the last few times when spots have been blown, and he, like, totally just, he like... super mad. He gets up, he gets really mad. He'll, yeah. like, he's yelling at referees. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't know if, he, if that's just us seeing it as that, but he's really acting that way, or if that's him straight up being pissed off. I think it's him kind of losing it. I think it's him being pissed off and losing Same it. Same as sure. uh, uh, Orton does that, too. And you, yeah, know, but you know Orton can't control his emotions. That's because Orton's a fuckface. Yeah. But I feel like Del Rio just doesn't give a shit, so now already he's got this bitter taste in his mouth of, like, I went back, they gave me a push, but it sucked. Yeah, and of course the way they do feuds is you do a match three pay-per-views in a row so it's essentially the only guy you're wrestling so he like Van Dam did Money in the Bank and basically then just wrestled Del Rio for the rest of the time yeah which is very unfortunate for him uh, I thought I thought he did he was good he had some good matches on Raw yeah um, yeah he did fine he had, a, he had a decent match with Orton he did yeah it was pretty which good had a, a spot I loved actually um he was going for the Rolling Thunder, and Orton got up and power slammed him out of the second roll yeah. of the Rolling Thunder. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, so, unfortunately, RV will be gone. But now we look forward to Alberto Del Rio and John Cena. Yes, John who, Cena coming back from a usually a six-month injury in uh, two months. Maybe he's just superhuman, or maybe he's rushing it because he can't stand to be away from his from his love child for that long. Yeah. Because, like... And I would assume he's on the uh, Vince McMahon recovery program. <laughs> probably. But, I, I, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna imagine, too, that when he does come back, I'm sure that they'll have him on a short leash for a little while. Yeah. I'm sure he'll wrestle the pay-per-view, and then whether he wins or loses, I'm sure he's winning. Right? Because why wouldn't he win? It seems like he would, yeah. Right? He's been champ for... A while. Coming on six months. Yeah, and the thing is, you, you bring Cena back, his first match back, and it's a title match, you really think he's not going to win? Yeah. I feel like he's going to win. And so, I feel like he'll win, and then maybe he'll, he'll have a few weeks where he doesn't do anything. He'll, he'll talk. Yeah. They'll set up a, uh, a rematch with Del Rio. Maybe they'll be, you know, he Del Rio jumps him, puts him in an arm bar, and they're like, oh, that's his bad elbow that he just came back from. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like that's probably what they'll end up doing. Uh, but, yeah. That's way. That's really fast coming back. 
That's crazy. I, I don't know how he did it. I mean, I guess guys come back from things real fast. Sometimes it's not always an extensive, lengthy recovery. Some guys just heal faster than others. Yeah. Um, so you supplement it with a lot of steroids. Yeah, oh, I'm sure that he's done a lot of things, and that's that's the thing with that company is they he, can. He needs to stop claiming he's clean. By the way, that pisses me off. Yeah, he's he's not. He's a big dude, and he's, I he's mean, straight up not. You you do have when you're when you're working out naturally without anything, you do have a peak. Yeah. There is a there is a point where no matter how much more you lift, you're not gaining muscle naturally. Yeah. So there's uh, like that, that's the thing is they can claim all they want that they're testing and they're making sure that nobody's on it. But I'm gonna say right now, there's no way the Ryback is not on something. Oh, hundred percent. Something, whether it's steroids or it's HGH or it's something we don't even know about. Yeah, some new thing that we won't hear about. Like you don't years. get that veiny and and like just huge. Look, big guy, big traps. Those are according to the words on his singlet. The sweetest singlets. But, I mean, there are, there are quite a few guys. Like, uh, you look at a guy like David Otunga. I mean, he's even employed by the company anymore. I don't know. But he hasn't been around for a while. No. But he went from being medi- medium-sized to, to... He legitimately was probably the biggest guy in the company. He Until so Ryback came around, yeah. he was the biggest guy in the company. And that's probably because he wasn't wrestling a lot, so he just spent all his time working out. Now, I think the timelines link up here, so let me know what you think about the possibility that Biggie Langston is David Otunga. Oh. How about that? That's... Uh, Does blow your mind? That, I'm... My mind has been blasted. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they can they can suspend as many guys as they want for marijuana and claim that that's the only thing people are getting busted for. Yeah. But there there is no way that some of those guys are not on something. Because, yeah. like, some of them are just, like, they look... A guy like Kofi Kingston who doesn't even work out the inside of his chest. <laughs> There's no way Kofi's on anything. No, Kofi's probably clean. But then there are other guys that are just grossly big. Yeah. Um, now, I'll, I don't know how much you know about this, but I'll ask a few questions. There are a few guys who have disappeared. And I'm, I don't know if you know anything like Seamus. I uh, still heard from Money in the Bank. Okay. Uh, Mark Henry. Uh, came back for a month, got yeah. injured again. I got injured again? Yes. Oh, Doing I Doing nothing. I don't know if he had a match. Because <laughs> they were they were building him and show yeah. against the Shield. Yeah. And I don't think the match even ever happened. And then he was gone. Well, that uh, sounds like... Well, he's getting older, and yeah. I'm sure his body's pretty beaten up. Yeah. Between weightlifting and wrestling... Um, <laughs> Evan Bourne. <laughs> Will we ever I see Evan Bourne no fucking clue. on wrestling again? When was the last time he wrestled? Well, it was before he got suspended for marijuana, so... Which was when? 2009? No, I'm going to say... <laughs> I know it's more Because there was what? <laughs> there was Air Boom. Well, was... Air Boom was probably the last time we saw him. That was, yeah, late 2011 was probably the last time we saw him. It's like well, well over a year. And it, yeah, like, and like if they suspended... Too. Even if they suspended him for a year. And I don't think they did. No. I mean, it was probably his second... Year. second. Which is 60 days at most. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that maybe he's rubbed some people the wrong way. Oh, I think he has. Uh, and that's probably why he's not around. But he was, you know, he was over enough. And yeah. he was entertaining. And so, man, he, I think he'd have been better served in the Indies in Japan. Yeah, yeah but it's like some of the like guys... Like, he'd probably have a full-time job with Dragon Gate. They go for the money. Yeah, but... He still could probably get a full-time job with Dragon Gate sure, if, yeah. just, if he just got out of his contract. Actually, really maybe he's out of contract and we don't even know because they don't even care. They, they didn't care enough to tell us. It's entirely possible. Like, they didn't even think the fan base would care if they released Evan Bourne. Yeah. So, like, yeah, let's just let him go. Fuck it. Um, so, on top of watching Raw and SmackDown every week, I get to watch NXT every week. Or, push. or as I like to refer to it as, push El Generico to the moon. <laughs> because push. that whole show... You know, there are worse things you could do with a program. Yeah, absolutely. Their whole show <laughs> is based around whatever the main event is... And it usually involves pushing Sami Zayn and proving to everybody that he's the best fucking worker in, in NXT, and he's better than almost 95% of the main roster. Oh, yeah, he'd be. He'd, I think he'd be in my top five of the main he, roster. He, he's, you know, for a guy who had an, in, an, an interesting gimmick, and I personally never really thought he would go to the... Because he didn't seem like an E guy. No, he doesn't seem like an E guy. He's not... In terms he, of look... He's not... Yeah, he doesn't have the look. And because 
his character wasn't really cutting promos. Yeah. And they are kind of very promo based. Yeah. It's, the... it's tough to go that far without being a decent promo. Yeah. Which maybe they just hoped he was. And he was. Which he is. <laughs> he absolutely is. Um, and the fact of the matter is he's incredibly over within the NXT crowd, yeah. which is usually the same crowd because they're based in Florida. They just yeah. stay in one place. Um, he's incredibly over. Uh, he's had some very, very good matches. I, he had arguably what's been one of the matches of the year so far with him and Cesaro. Yeah. Because Cesaro can toss people around and Generico's good at being tossed around. So, um, and I'm, they've wrestled a million times in the indies, so they obviously had a feel for one another. But every week you watch that show and you're like, let's see what else he can do. He's he, Look, he wrestled Kurt Hawkins two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Uh-huh. Even that match was good because because of him. It had nothing to do with Kurt Hawkins being in the match, but just solely with him being in that match, that was a great match. Yeah. I mean, they hit all their spots. The crowd was really into it. Kurt Hawkins is a very generic, boring wrestler, so it really it didn't help at all that he was that it was him. And uh, I mean, watching it every week, I do fast forward through some of it, but he's very very good and and. He's getting a title match against Bo Dallas, who I swear could be one of the worst. Yeah. He's, the, he's the worst promo in the company, and he could be one of the worst wrestlers. And I love the fact that they tried to bring him in as a face, and then they had the same reaction that they've had with several guys, where they bring him in, they hope that people are going to like him, they hate they him, hate and they have to turn him heel because they hate him. Yeah. But he plays the gimmick where he thinks that's kind of funny that they, they think he, that they don't like him yeah. so he kind of plays it up like that but he's horrible he's terrible but I, I you got to imagine that Sami Zayn's winning the title in two weeks um, and I would imagine that he would get the call up maybe after Wrestlemania yeah somewhere in that somewhere around there because like, that's when they kind of like to bring guys up bring guys. Um, but yeah he's he's really killing it for a, for a show that's kind of you know I guess they NXT would be something that competes with Impact because, you know, they don't have amazing ratings, but they do well. They, do, they, do, they do better than Impact. They absolutely do. Do they air in the States, though? NXT? Yeah. They have to. I don't think they do. What? I'm not kidding. I'm pretty sure NXT does not air in America. What? I think you have to watch it on Hulu. Oh, really? Or like on WD.com? Yeah. Huh. Crazy. How they have distribution with every other country besides the country they're based out of? I don't really know. I don't know. I guess they... But, uh... I guess our country needed something more to put on TV, so they bought the rights to it. Yes. I'm fine with watching it every week. Yeah. Now, the only the only downside to NXT is they've got a lot of talent, but most of them have gimmicks, and a lot of them will you will never see on actual WWE TV. Uh-huh. I mean, there are a lot of guys down there that are fine if they're working... You know NXT, but you get them to the main roster, nobody's gonna care, and that's probably the last you'd see of them. Yeah. Um, there's a recently last week, uh, Chris Hero came back to TV, and I'll be honest, not very impressed with him. Did yeah, not did said. not think he did a lot. Um, he he just didn't seem to have the. I guess he he just wasn't the same as when he was wrestling in the Indies. Which is kind of sad because I was really hoping that they would bring Kings of Wrestling in as a tag team. I know. I mean, Kings of Wrestling was the, the best thing going in wrestling for yeah. three, four years. Yeah. And now, uh, I mean, Claudio, at least he's got a regular gig. Yeah. Gr- granted, it's not amazing. I mean, he came in because they needed to keep Zeb Coulter on TV when Jack Swagger got suspended. Yeah. So they stuck him with Coulter because they needed to keep Coulter on TV because he was their biggest thing at the time. And now he's the number one member of a tag team that he wasn't even supposed to be in. Yeah. Granted, he's done two of the greatest things in the last couple of weeks. Yes. Which was Giant Swings to Great Kali and Giant Swing to Hornswoggle, which he played a silly joke at the beginning. Pretended he was too heavy heavy and his back hurt. And then gave him... This was directly after doing It's a Great Company. Yeah, which was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I hope uh, Cesaro is building to... Because I think they're going to do something with him because Giant Swing's getting very over and his wrestling has always been pretty over because he's so good. Um, So I hope they're building to A, him doing 
they, they'll have to drop the tag team at some point. And him doing something kind of big, I don't see him challenging for the world title anytime soon. But some big feud, like maybe uh, him and Punk or something along the I would, lines. I would love a, to see him as a, as a semi main event or something. Yeah. And, um, but what I'm thinking that might do is they're maybe building to him setting the record with the giant swing. Ah. Which I think is around 110 by uh, Hiroshi Hase in New Japan back in the 90s. Uh-huh. So, so they'll put him against somebody a little bit smaller. Someone smaller. And skinny, current skinny punk is not a bad yeah. candidate. Or, uh, or this is a good segue. Or uh, the person that we both think Ugh. should be wrestling Claudio. If it doesn't happen, I'm going to be furious. Three times a week. Uh, both of our new favorite wrestler, uh, El Torito. <laughs> El Torito is the best thing going. And ju- the fact of the matter is, Claudio is going to be able to, like, legitimately toss him in the air like he's a baby. Yeah. And then catch him into a Hurricane Rana and just take take it. It's going to be like wrestling a football. Like, it'll be, it'll be like when Kelly wrestled Invisible Chicho. <laughs> like, it'll be yeah. amazing. And the best part, too, about it is that, like, El Torito doesn't actually have to take anything. No. He just has to get tossed around and then do arm drag, head scissors, Rana. Hurricane Rana, yeah. like, you know, like all these crazy things. Like, I'm, I'm going to imagine that at some point it'll end up being a six-man tag. It'll be uh, the Matadors and him versus the Real Americans and Zeb Coulter. Yes. And Coulter, Coulter, Coulter will do nothing. No. I mean, he might get a punch in or then he'll get punched or yeah. they'll, like, toss El Torito onto him for a crossbody and he'll get pinned, right? Because yeah. uh, Dirty Dutch can't really do a he's whole lot. He, he's an old man and he can't really do a whole lot. Yeah. But I'm sure that that'll be what they build to and then that'll probably get them an El Torito Claudio thing, which maybe, I'm, I'm going to say if it happens, it probably happens once. Yeah. I think we'll get it one time. It'll be after a six-man tag or a tag match yeah. where he gets involved and does something to embarrass Claudio, yeah. and then Claudio wrestles him the next week. And it will be amazing. Oh, and it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a ten-star match. <laughs> it'll be incredible. But I can't, I can't imagine that they'll actually build to a match, series of matches with them. No. I mean, they might do some stuff on house shows maybe, like just a little thing here and there, but... I can't, I can't imagine them doing that. But what would be... Well, now, this is another storyline that I thought would be really funny, is that if they start feuding with them and they bring in an American midget to wrestle El Torito... Not Hornswoggle. No, 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 because Hornswoggle is Irish. Please, he's, he's a leprechaun. Sorry, yes. Um, although he's probably got an American citizenship because he's Vince McMahon's son. Yes. Um, or Finley's son. Or Finley's son. But he or... still means he has American uh, passport. But if they could find a, like, somewhat good American midget, sorry, LP, to wrestle El Torito, that would be a pretty silly storyline. But that seems like yeah. something right up their alley, considering a couple weeks ago, I don't remember if it was SmackDown or Raw, I think it was SmackDown, and it was done, no, it was 100% SmackDown. And it was Santino versus Heath Slater. Heath Slater had Jinder Mahal in his corner, Santino had the great Kali in his corner. I read about this. <laughs> <sighs> Santino pulls out the Cobra, goes to hit it. Jinder Mahal jumps on the apron and starts playing like a flute. Yeah. And the Cobra starts like Charm the cobra. charming him over towards <coughs> Jinder Mahal. Then great Kali gets up on the other apron and starts playing his flute. Because and then, all uh, Indian uh, people uh, can charm snakes. <laughs> Are you this being is the lesson. sarcastic? No, I'm pretty sure I can. Okay. <laughs> and so, of course, the Cobra goes back and forth, back and forth. And then Jinder Mahal gets it, so it's trying to get... It's going to get Santino. Oh, my God. Like, they're not above doing silly things like that. So, a, a masked little bull Mexican LP <laughs> wrestling and a, a real American LP is not against what they would do. Yeah. I love the way I found out about... <laughs> El Torito, because I had Raw taped, uh, Dan and I, I guess I just watched the last New Japan pay-per-view, and, uh, and Dan, oh yeah, yeah, because it was on like a Tuesday or something, so he had seen Raw, um, and he asked if I had, and I said no, uh, but I knew the, the Matadors were debuting, and he's like, did you know they had a manager? I'm like, no, I did not know they had a manager, who is it? He's like, oh, you're gonna like it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, is it like another Puerto Rican guy or something? He's like... Nope, it's a little bull. <laughs> and I got so excited. Here's the thing. I missed Raw 
and then I recorded SmackDown. And so when I was fast forwarding through SmackDown at the fastest speed, I saw the little flash for yeah. Matadors being up next. You saw so, the slideshow. And I was like, oh, I, I forgot that I missed them on Raw. So I, uh, I, paused, like I stopped it. And before they got to the ring, Michael Cole and JBL were talking about the little, like, you know, they, they had a little bull. And I was like, oh, what do they do? Like, dress up a bulldog with horns or something? Like, I thought it would be something stupid, right? Yeah. And then, uh, so they come out, they do their little thing, they set up their, uh, their capes, and then I saw, the, like, a, a, an LP run through, and I was like, instantly, this is my favorite thing. <laughs> this is my favorite thing in wrestling. Uh, this is a man, I'm a man who my favorite thing for the longest time was the boogeyman. So, anything silly to me is my favorite. Now, as much as I love El Torito, I did say to Scott that, the Matadors are a very entertaining team. I mean, they're they're flashy. They do fun things. They are a very dancey team. It is a shame that the Colognes, as a family, are the sloppiest and <laughs> laziest wrestlers in the world. Because if you look at Carlito, oh, Carlito, and then you look at Primo and Epico, they have all been very messy wrestlers. They've had some messiness. Now, we did say that Primo yeah, but... and, and Epico are... Much wait, wait better than Carlito, yeah, wait, wait. but they are still very sloppy. Like if you watch their their matches, I don't think that the two of them are very comfortable in masks for one. They're not because they and, are and constantly and, fixing them. And they're shitty masks. They're bandanas with eyes cut in them. Yeah, which you can tell they really don't like wearing. Yeah. But there have been a few things where like uh, I don't I don't know which one of them it was because I can't tell when they're actually wrestling. I can tell when I see their faces. Yeah. But one of them. Uh, in the corner uh, to go like an up and over uh, guy runs in he kicks him off the chest and then supposed to do like a handstand on the top rope yeah well he like he first of all he barely made it up and then his legs sort of started to fall and then he like barely got up and you could definitely see his arms like <laughs> really shaking to try and hold himself up right like I don't think they're super comfortable with the way that they're uh, they're being portrayed right now or like yeah. the moves they're being told to do I don't think they're very comfortable in them yet which is which doesn't help when they're already kind of shitty wrestlers. <laughs> now this is something very near and dear to my heart. Uh, El Torito, is he the first WWE wrestler with a tail? I'm going to say. Do you count Bobby Heenan in a weasel costume? <laughs> I would say no. Okay. Do you can? Did Mantor have a tail? No. Just had a furry butt. Just had a furry butt. Uh, gobbledygooker? He had a tail. Yes. Yeah. You can make a case. You can make a case, but he might be. Yeah. He's the first legitimate wrestler with an actual tail. Yeah. So this is no longer a glass ceiling I can break. No. Nope. Thus, I will no longer be attempting to get to the WWE. I was gonna say, is this you retiring from wrestling? This me retiring from WWE. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. And he also, the little fucker, which I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say conservatively 50% sure he stole from me. Fucking modified animal boots. Oh. <laughs> He's got hoof boots. He's got hoof boots. He got that from me. 100%. He, he must He must have watched the clips. He's watching a lot of Ice Ice Day. He's, he's a fan. Yeah. And good for him. Now, he is the best Mexican wrestler. He's, he's the most spectacular mini of all time. They went out they really got the best. Yeah. They didn't just dress Hornswoggle up in a bull costume. No, they dressed the best up in a bull which costume. Which I was really hoping they were, that it wasn't when I saw him. I was like, oh, oh okay, he's too skinny. Yeah. Because no, oh, Hornswoggle's yeah. kind of fat now. He might... Okay, pound for pound, I think Hornswoggle's the fattest guy in the company. Yes. For, for his height to weight ratio? He's so fat. 100%. He's in the worst shape. He's in worse shape than Bray Wyatt. That's true. Because Hornswoggle, I guarantee you, cannot do a terrifying spider walk. No, he can't. Um, now, they're building again to another Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton match. Hell yep. in a Cell. Main event in a Hell in a Cell. Shawn Michaels ref. Shawn Michaels ref. How much longer do you think they can really run the storyline of he wins and gets screwed? That's the thing. Because, like, they pulled the rug out from under us twice. So... And, and do you have the same feeling that I do? Actually, three times. Oh, because, yep. like, yep. the day after he beat Cena... Yeah. Uh, no, the day he beat Cena, he gets fucked by Orton. Then he and Orton have a match. 
and it's the stupid fast count thing. Yeah. So he has to vacate it. And then they have a match for the vacant title, and it remains vacant still at the end of the night. Which is in one of the worst pay-per-view finishes in a long time. Absolutely. So, and maybe it's because they know these shitty finishes are coming. Their matches haven't been great. Nope. They've nope. been fine. They've been, yeah, they've been acceptable. But, like, n- nothing's been as good as their Raw match yet. Uh, I'm sure it's hard to stay motivated when you know that the end of it is a schmoz. And, yeah, and I don't even 100% blame them. Because, like, here's the thing. If you go, like, I, I don't think this is the way they look at it. I don't think they're wrestling for star ratings. But I sort of do. <laughs> so, if, from my standpoint, if I go all out, to- total balls to the wall, have an amazing match and that finish no one's going to give it five stars no 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 that 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 kind of a finish automatically I would say takes away one star easy right like Like automatically the highest you could go is four if it's amazing with that finish it's maybe a four yeah so why bother right yeah wait for when you can do a good clean finish and have a great match overall and so I don't 100% blame them for like not having these amazing top tier matches with these shit finishes. Yeah, well, and and, and I'm sure like, too, like a guy like Danielson, who, even though easily the, the most over guy in the company, I think he's more over than Punk is. Punk's over, yeah, really big, but Daniel Dennis Danielson is, is the most over. way over. Yeah, like he, people have been comparing him to as over as Austin was. Yeah, which now, I don't think we're there. Not not yet, but he's super could over. happen. He's super over, I'll but. Say that. Different, different era and different fans. Yes. Uh, I think he's more, more over now than anybody's been in the last 10 years. He's, um... I mean, even guys like, uh... Even Cena when the fans didn't hate him. I was going to say, the, the other people I would say are uh, Punk 2011. Yeah. When he did his big, cool promo. Yeah. Um, and Cena before the fans turned on him. Yeah. So, like, Cena 2004, 2005. But I, I still think Danielson's more over now than those two were. I think there is because I, of the chant. I think the chant really helps him be over. I would over. have to revisit how over Punk was, but I think he is more over than Cena, even not getting booed. Cena. Yeah. And I think the fact that he has a chant that's easy to chant. One word. And the fr- fans love to do it. Yeah. They I do. think that's what really helps him, especially with like Austin, with like the three sixteen, and then the what? Yeah. That helped him. I mean, obviously his whole persona and everything he did yeah, yeah. but having something like that that really defines who you are like your character yeah. definitely majorly helps you get over right sure. so having the fans love to yell yes and him being a very likable person he's a great worker he's a great performer great he's, promo, got a, he's got he's yeah, got people yeah. always used to say like not so much and maybe at, at the very beginning of his WWE run they say it but like lots of people when he was like doing his thing in the indies they'd say he was a bad promo I'm like who are you watching? He doesn't do a lot of promos. When he does, they're awesome. Yeah. He was doing good promos back to first year of ROH. I remember he did, like, a really funny promo with Spanky. And, like, he's always been good at everything. Yep. Yeah. I, I think he's a very underrated promo cutter. And especially considering he's cutting one every week now. Yeah, in, in that spot, you got yeah. to be cutting one every, every week. Every week. So... And he's doing good. Like, you know, you can kind of gauge by... Um, like the Wrestling Observer and Brian and Vinny reviews of the shows. I've, ne- I've never heard Alvarez, Meltzer, Vinny, anyone say, um, sometimes they're not thrilled with it, but they've never said that was a bad promo by Danielson. Yeah. Because, like, you know, like, when sometimes they're kind of nonchalant, they're like, oh, Danielson came out, did, you know, did a 10-minute promo, it was pretty good, move on. And other times they're like, oh, this was a great promo by Danielson. And that's the range. The range is pretty good to great. He's never bad. Yeah, there's no mediocre or lower. Yeah. Um, so that being said... Do you get the feeling that I have, which is... I think it's more than a feeling. Is it more than a feeling? Yeah, I, if, and if I had more lyrics from that song, nah, I, I was just about to, them now. <laughs> that's why I didn't say it, because I was like, uh... uh more than a feeling. <laughs> now, do you get the same feeling that I have, that this match is somehow going to turn into either setting up Sean and Trips at Mania... Ooh. Or Sean screwing over Danielson because he's friends with Trips. I, I Trips gives him the whole 
Yeah. You're, we're buddies, do this for me, you Best know. for business, blah, blah, Or blah. do you think that it leads to what I think, this is this is the way I think. I think it can go that way where he does what's best for business to help out Triple H. Yeah. I think the way that it's going to go is that um, Danielson's going to get the win, Triple H is going to come out and, to, and say, no, Sean, that's no, like something, 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 we're restarting the match, and then it's going to lead to Sean super kicking trips, counting the three, three count, and Danielson wins. Danielson gets the big win, finally. Like, I feel that that's how it's going to go, and they're going to build that, build it, build it, and it's going to be Triple H and Sean at Mania. That, that's interesting. I didn't consider Triple H and Sean at Mania. Can't rule it out, though. That That's interesting, actually. I, I really haven't yeah. thought of that. I, I had thought of, you know, the various scenarios of what happens with Sean as the ref. Like, does he call it clean? Does he basically turn heel? Or, you know, or whatever. Or does, does he do what's best for business? Yeah, or does he have to, like you said, super kick Triple H and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, I didn't think of much about Sean after this. So it's possible, and there's really no um, WrestleMania stuff like set in stone yet. Yeah, there's nothing that's really been so, like, defined. What's Triple H gonna do? What's Danielson gonna do? What's you know what's Punk gonna do? What's Big Show gonna do? What's Taker gonna do? What's Brock gonna do? What's Cena gonna do? Yeah, well, my, the the way that I would say that it's looking to me is that I feel like uh, Cena wins the title now. Do you think he holds it until Mania? I think he holds it until Mania, and he's Taker? he's the one that faces Taker. Yeah. And then I think that Danielson um, wins it, and then unfortunately they're going to fucking do it, loses it back. Mm-hmm. He wins the Rumble, gets the rematch at Mania, wins it, and that's like the end of the... From Orton? From Orton. And this is the end of the, like best for business, screwing him over, and then from yeah. Mania on, he carries it as, like, the big yeah. guy. So in that scenario, would you say they probably also do Triple H Big Show? From uh, a storyline perspective? That, well, I still think it's going to be Triple H and... Oh, sorry, t- sorry, you have Triple H Tri- Sean. Triple H yeah, and Sean. And then I think that it's going to end up being Punk and Lesnar. I think they'll do another one. It could. I think, yeah. that, I think they'll probably do a rematch of that. And then as far as Big Show goes... And Punk, and Punk wins. Yeah, that makes sense. Punk, Punk gets the win. Punk gets the win, yeah. And yeah. then I guess Taker beats Cena. I think so. Because there's no way Taker's not winning. I but then the problem with that is now then... He's gonna the now he's got the title. But I do feel like Taker could do one more pay-per-view and job it back sure. or do whatever. I don't right? think that's a problem. Right? Like, that's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, but I do think it'll end up being Cena and Taker. I and think then, Cena Taker's pretty likely. Yeah, Cena yeah. Taker... Orton and Danielson, yeah. Michaels and Hunter, Cena and Lesnar. Punk and Lesnar. Or sorry, Punk and Lesnar. And then I think it'll. I feel like it's going to end up being Big Show and either Big Show versus Big uh, Moxley for the U.S. or it'll be Big Show and somebody versus the Shield. Depending how long the feud goes, Big Show and Roses versus Shield. No, because I think that WrestleMania is going to be Cody versus Dustin. <laughs> Oh, okay. I think at some point that it's going to be like sort of like the gold, uh, gold uh, Dustin turns on him. You know, you were dad's favorite. Yeah. Like I've went through all this where dad didn't treat me well, and he's always been there for you. Yeah. And then they'll do Gold Dust Cody at WrestleMania, and I kind of feel like that might be Gold Dust's last hurrah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, be. he's getting. A I remember little... they teased it for WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, Twenty twelve. When Cody was a heel and he was a face, and he made the return at uh, yeah. Royal Rumble, and then Cody eliminated him. Right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I kind of feel like that's the way it's going to go, is that they're going to turn uh, Goldust heel at some point before the end of the year, or maybe after, right after Rumble, Yeah. and then uh, then they'll have the whole thing where it's sort of... And I, I honestly think that maybe he might come out and cut a promo as himself. Yep. You know, say, like, I don't need this face paint, this isn't me, yeah. uh, this is me talking to my brother, like, Dad always loved you more, and... Goldust he, is my slave name. <laughs> and he, like, you know, Dad was always there for you, and... And he wasn't there for me, and I and like you know the whole jealousy card, and then and then it'll end up being the two of them in Mania. They'll, they'll probably have a really good match. Yep, that'll work. And then that might be the end of like you know Dustin might retire and be road agent again or something yep. like that, you know, or maybe go down and work at NXT with his yep. dad. Uh, that's how I think WrestleMania will go. Yep, I'd be okay with that. And then uh, as far as the other card, like the other matches, I mean. I'm sure that Axel will probably have the the Intercontinental because it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and who right? are you gonna lose it to? Uh, who gives a shit? No one. I fucking you know what? Honestly, they would. I would like to see them give you know like maybe have him and Christian. Oh yeah, Christian. maybe. 
because Christian should be back. He's hurt again, right? He got a concussion. Yeah. So he should be back by then, right? Yeah. Um, and then I don't know. I mean, uh, you can do you can do tag team turmoil maybe, or you could do Ziggler and somebody versus the Shield, or yeah, or you can just throw in some random guy. Yeah, or if they keep pushing like. Prime players, prime time players, yeah, or the Usos or something. Yeah. Although I think it should be, it should be prime time players, and I feel like they should, they'll probably be the ones that beat the Shield. Yeah. Um, just because when your partner is gay, you get a push. Of course. Because they can't be like, I think they're very fearful to be discriminative. We can't be the ones not pushing the game. Exactly. I feel like they, they, they have a public image. They want to. That's where we always had to push Dan. Exactly. Dan always had to be top of the card because. Um, he's the champion right now. It's fine. He's not going to listen to this. He doesn't listen to them. He's not. And even if he did, he wouldn't make it this far through. No, no, no. Absolutely not. We're safe. Um, as long but, as no one tells him. Everyone listening, keep your fucking mouth shut. Yes, yeah, Steve. Steve. Um, <laughs> but, I, yeah, I feel like the Primal players probably... They're, they're pretty over. They're, they're decent wrestlers. Yeah. Um, I think they'll be the ones that end up beating the Shield. But then... I don't know what they'll do with the shield after that because yeah. how long have they had but, the tag titles? When, they must have won them pretty early in the year. It was very early, yeah, because they were on the pre-show at Mania in the six-man, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. And they had them then. Yeah. So it must have been February, March. Yeah, February, March, somewhere in there. So um, they'll probably hold them a year unless something happens. Yeah, I can't see them like. But that's the thing is, at the moment they they are trying to build up the tag division. But the Shield having the tag titles doesn't really mean anything because they're still involved in everything anyways. Yeah. Right? Like, I I, I almost feel like it, it. they should job them. Yeah, sometimes I forget. Be- I'm like, oh, yeah, all three of them have titles. Yeah, do you ever realize that at the moment it's all heel champions? Oh, wow. Every champion in the company is a heel. Del Rio. I, well, wow, I guess, it is. Well, I guess I, I'm still considering Orton the champion. He was, be- the, most, he was the most recent. Because... Danielson's not win like when they win it they give it yeah. back to Orton sort of you know like so every champion in the company right now is a heel yeah but I, I feel like the shield should job it because then you give it to one of these other teams and then they're the main focus of that as opposed to you the shield yeah. who their main focus is kind of doing Triple H's bidding and jumping guys yeah and then being involved in like handicap matches or six man tags that are just more of beating up the other guys than it is actually defending the titles yeah whereas at least with Moxley having the title, he's defending it. And he sort of had that, that feud with Ziggler, and then he had, you know, he's doing some stuff, at least the title on him means something, yeah. where the tag team titles on them don't really mean anything. And if no. you give it to, like, the prime players or the Usos or, or whatever, you know, they've got... Now they have something. They've got the Real Americans to feud with, yeah. or, you know, now you've got the Matadors in there, and you've, you've got a, a somewhat of a tag team vision again. Yeah. Um, so at least... It, gives meaning to the, the tag titles being on TV, whereas the Shield doesn't matter, because yeah. they're already on TV main eventing yeah. anyways. Also, a quick note on the Shield. Roman Reigns is the worst wrestler to be in the most good matches this year or maybe of all time. Yes. He's been in probably 10 to 15 four-star matches in 2013, and he's a bad wrestler. <laughs> he's a bad wrestler. He is hidden so well in Shield Six Mans and even tags with Rollins. Yeah. Because, like, the tag against the Rhodes boys was great, and largely because Reigns was in for maybe 60 seconds of the 15-minute match. Yeah. That's the thing, though, is he's one of those guys who was a football player who became a wrestler yeah. because it's his family, right? He's great at coming in at the end and spearing and the spearing shit. spearing people, so. yeah, absolutely. But he's not, like, the couple singles matches he's had suck. Yeah, he's not great. I was, I'm kind of like... I, I'm, Luckily, the other two are awesome, so... That's the thing, is I think that the other two they being so, so good, yeah. they they kind of distract you from how, like, uninvolved and, and, and bad he is, yeah. right? I mean, his his family is has been, has produced some good wrestlers. Yeah. And yeah, like, like as, as a unit, you know, they're like, they're two nines and a four, and, you know, even that averages out to above seven. Yeah. So, they're still good regardless of what he does. And normally he's fine because they limit him so much. Who are you counting as a nine? I think Rollins and Ambrose are really awesome. Oh, the team? Yeah. I thought you meant his family. I'm like, which one of his family members is a no, nine? No, 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 no. <laughs> Rollins, Rollins and Ambrose. Yeah, they're both. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Ambrose, who, by the way, has lost like 20 pounds of just fat and then gained like 20 pounds yeah. of just muscle. Yeah, he, he looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. Now... He was he was like borderline chubby in like CCW and stuff. Yeah, he was. He was a bigger guy. Yeah. Um, 
it was weird. When, I remember when they signed him, and I thought, I can't see him getting over. Remember when, like, he, I can't, remember when he was going to debut against Mick Foley? Yes. That was a thing. I can't, I couldn't really think, like, imagine him being, yeah, uh, like, a bigger name, like, a, a, involved in storylines and, and being a main focus. Yeah. Like, I couldn't really imagine that in my head. But now seeing him, you're like, oh yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, of course. How could he not be? Yeah. Right. Like, and, and the thing too is like, he's so confident. He's very confident, and he's and he's very good at um, like the the being a douchebag heel yeah. comes very naturally to him. Yes. Like he does. It doesn't seem like he even has to try. Yeah. There's certain guys like there's lots of good wrestlers, but like I even don't necessarily notice it that much with like Danielson. But there's some guys when you watch them, they're like they are so confident in every move they're making. Ambrose is one. Alex Shelley is another. Like, yeah. Watch Alex Shelley really closely for a match, and he's so precise and knows exactly what he's doing. He knows he knows the next eight things he's doing. If any, they're so on top of their shit. If anybody knows Alex Shelley and would like to give this to him, uh, Scott will suck his dick. I, uh, I, have, I have an address of his from several years ago when he bought a DVD off me, but um, I don't know if it's still he, current. He bought a DVD off you? He uh, had me make a Kaz Hayashi compilation for him. Because he loves Kaz Hayashi. Oh, I was going to say, is it one of those creepy things where he wanted to jerk off to it? Oh, look, I don't, what Alex Shelley does in his spare time is none of my business. I'm just saying I made a Kaz Hayashi compilation for him. Well, I am not downplaying by any means the greatness of Alex Shelley. He's a, very, he's a great ring technician. You know, he does not fuck up a lot of stuff. Maybe his body, but not <laughs> matches. Yeah. You know, I, I think he's great. Um, I don't think he's a guy who will ever be in the E, though. I can't really imagine him being I, there. I don't see it. Although, the only way... See, but we have said that about a lot of guys. Yeah. There was a lot of guys. I never, in a million years, thought... Like, when Punk first signed, I never thought he could call up to the main yeah. roster. When Danielson got signed, I never thought he could call up to the main roster. Generico. Generico, Claudio. Yeah. Even, to a lesser extent, Loki. Yep. Yeah. I never thought Loki would ever be on TV. And then he wins NXT, does nothing, and quits. Yeah. But still, I never thought he would actually be on no. TV, you know? So, I'll, I'll maybe, who knows? Maybe at some point, you know, Danielson or Claudio will say something like, hey, maybe give him a look, and then, yeah. who knows, right? I mean... They the, the E recently signed fucking Sammy Callahan. They just signed Sammy Callahan. And, and I they, never and they said no to Adam Cole. Yeah, which, Adam Cole's okay though. I don't know. He's probably better than Sammy Callahan. Well, yeah, I'm not saying Sammy he's Callahan. Not as much what they're looking for as Sammy Callahan. I just Sammy's can't. More interesting. I, don't I can't know. imagine that Sammy Callahan, his tapes impressed anybody. How did the E watch Sammy Callahan matches and go, "That's an E wrestler right there"? Yeah, I'm not sure. That is insane. It's, because yeah. he's a he's a decent wrestler. He's not a bad wrestler. He's kind of a weird pick. But just a lot of his stuff is really non-PG. Yeah. And, and another one, um, when they were hardly signing any, like, name indie guys, like, when it was, like, just punk, yeah. basically. And they signed Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel's good, but it's not like he was the best guy on the indies. Like, there were a lot of other, like, Hero, like Hero Claudio Danielson then, all much bigger deals than Matt Seidel. Yeah. He, he, he just seemed like such a weird signing. He did okay for a while though, until he, until weed became till, more till, important. Yeah, wrestling. Until weed became his number one thing. Yeah. Um. So from there to the next point, I would like to ask you about because I I haven't heard anything about it. Maybe you've heard something about it. Uh, did Hogan sign a contract extension with TNA? Has it yet? Probably uh, good chance he won't. Because he might be gone legit. Because their main pay per view is is, in 10 oh, days. is next Sunday. Yeah. And his contract expires on Friday? Something like that. I think it's, like, the, the Friday before. Yeah. And you're telling me that they're going to go into their biggest show of the year without the biggest wrestler of all time, or, you know, one of the biggest wrestlers of all time, yeah. which realistically is probably one of the biggest reasons why they have fans, because diehard wrestling fans still want to see Hulk Hogan. see Hulk Hogan, yeah. Granted, I don't think that he could... I, I don't even think he could kneel down on the mat. I mean, all he's good for is a couple punches and a promo. Yeah. But I, I honestly cannot believe that how poorly run that company is. To the fact where AJ Styles has been your poster boy since day one, and you can only manage to sign him to a six-month extension. <laughs> Reed, like, are you really willing to take the risk that he might leave and sign WWE? Yeah. Like, you're not going to give him more money. Now, to be fair, they don't have a lot of money, and the contract that they've given Hogan... 
is enough money to keep all those guys they had to let go on their contracts, yeah. right? Like, the, as far as I understood, from what I heard from uh, Brian and uh, Brian and Vinny, is that or maybe it was Wrestling Observer, whatever it was, um, is that they had big plans for Doc. They wanted Festus to be a super babyface and feud with the Ace and Eights. Yeah, and then they decided he was going to be in the Anderson spot. We don't have the money. Yeah, let him go. Yep. Right. Same thing with Anderson. Don't have the money. Write him off TV. Let him go. Yep. Devon, fucking Devon. Yep. Second in command of that goddamn group. Brother of the champion. Yep. Decent worker. Yep. It's fine. Let him go. Yep. But instead, you got to sign Hogan to enough money that you that that you could sign five guys in his place, six guys, yeah. roster guys who could actually wrestle. Yeah, sign five guys or open up a five guys. Well, yeah, they could open up a five guys in the impact zone. In the impact zone. Which would be a hell of yeah. a revenue stream. Honestly, that would probably make them decent money. Yeah. Um, it might be the first time TNA ever made money. Uh, they would still be in the hole. <laughs> but that's just to me is like, I, I can't believe how poorly run the whole company is. Like, and they honestly feel like they're competition to the E. And you're telling me that they can't even keep their top guys under contract or guys that are involved in main storylines under contract yeah. and now they've lost the impact zone yeah. and they have to find a new place to permanently re- re- tape yeah. are they moving back to Nashville is that what I, I heard something about them maybe going back to the yeah, old Nashville I building know yet. I, th- I think we'll do some scouting in Nashville and see what we can find out okay go to the fairgrounds ask around yeah we'll ask some questions we'll uh we'll ask some questions <laughs> um but I, I still honestly cannot, like, I used to watch it because I didn't get the channel here that Raw and SmackDown are on. So I was like, yeah, hey, I'll watch so wrestling. the only thing you could jerk off to every week was him back. Yeah, absolutely. Joseph Park got me hard. Um, but that's, like, you know, kind of like background noise, sort of, but still sort of pay attention to it, right? Yeah. Just because, you know, I kind of needed a little bit of wrestling. But now that I have Raw, SmackDown, and even NXT every week, like, I don't even care about Impact. Yeah, I haven't watched it in, I haven't watched it in a month. Yeah. Like, I used to watch it every week or try and watch it every week if I was home. And then the first couple of weeks I had a PVR, I would PVR it. And then I would end up fast-forwarding through the entire... Like, I wouldn't even stop. Yeah. I was just like, garbage, 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 yeah, garbage. I, I've Joseph Park, garbage, 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 garbage. Fast-forward the whole thing without stopping. Yeah. And the thing is, too, like... Honestly, they don't even really have... Like, a... Aries. I like Bobby Roode. I think he's good. And that's it. What else do they have? I mean, da- AJ's fine, but he's been doing the same thing for 10 years. Yeah. Danielson's fine, or Daniels is fine, but he's been doing the same thing for 10 years. Yeah, you know? been good. Like, and it's the, it's the best they've ever used Kazarian. Yeah, but still, like, I, I don't feel like I need to watch them, right? Sure, I, yeah. I've seen them and enough. And it's not like they're having blockbuster matches. No, and like Jeff Hardy, like, I don't give a shit about Jeff Hardy. Yeah. I, ca- I care enough about Sting, but I don't really need to watch him wrestle. Yeah. But like, Sting's, with, with one, of, on. Sting's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, but I don't need to watch him wrestle or anything right it just kind of I yeah. guess I guess for me it's more of like I want to see him before he's gone you yeah. know like you know he's there so you're like okay I'll just see what Sting's doing and then and, uh, WWE may take a run at Sting too I did hear that as well because yeah. they still are still clinging on to that Sting Undertaker yeah. at Mania which I'll watch it I'm sure I'll be super giddy for it I, I will be the most excited person in the world <laughs> and then after it happens we'll be very disappointed I bet <laughs> Uh, although yeah. you know what, realistically, at, their, at both their ages, they can still go. Yeah, it, no, they, it might not be terrible. No, they both know how to work. I mean, so. Sting's just as good now as he was maybe at the end of WCW. He's yeah. just a little bit older. And Taker knows how to do his WrestleMania match. Yeah, absolutely. They're basically backyard matches. <laughs> <laughs> just kick out of every finish. Well, that, that's the thing too is it's uh, even though uh, as well as it's backyard matches, having Undertaker at what forty-seven in there, and Sting's probably fifty-two. Yeah. 53, maybe in there somewhere? 50s, yeah. Those two having a match, you're not going to expect them to do crazy shit. Yeah. You're going to expect them to do all their spots, hit all their moves, yeah. and then go home, uh-huh. right? So going into it like that, I think you're going to be like, okay, I, this is what I expect this match to be, and it should realistically live up to those expectations. Because yeah. I, I honestly, with a, in a, if, that, if this match were, were to happen in... An ideal world where they sign Sting through WrestleMania. Yeah. 
I don't think you're going to see a take or dive. You're not going to see Unlikely. any crazy table bumps. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see what you've seen in the Undertaker Triple H matches. You know, I think you're going to yeah. see stinger splashes. You're going to see old school. You're going to see them hitting their big spots. There'll be probably a lot of, you know, clotheslines, double downs, uh, corner to corner stuff. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of pretty simple wrestling. So I think your expectations for that match would be a little bit lower. So I think it would meet expectations and actually be a pretty good match. Yeah. Now, whether or not it actually happens... Is another story. Well, because I know, you know, Sting's been pretty outspoken about not wanting to be in WWE before. Yeah. But that was when they were a little bit more out there and a little more uh, adult. Yeah. Now that they're a little more P- PG, it might fit into what he's a little more comfortable. Because he is a, a born-again Christian, right? Yeah. But he's, he's friends with Taker. Yep. You know, he's friends with a few guys, Booker T. He's a few friends with a few guys in the company. So maybe if they can sort of talk him through it and say, give it a shot. It's just one one big payday. Yep. You know, you come in, you finally get that thing that everybody's wanted. Then they can release a Sting DVD. Yep. He'll make money off that. He'll, he'll sell shirts. You know, and I'm yep. sure maybe he's not interested in the money. I mean... If he's working in TNA for this long, he obviously can't be that interested in the money because he's not. He's, he's probably getting paid good, but not as good as he could be. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think he's fine for. Uh, well, I'm sure that team. realistically, to me, he seems like a guy who's probably smart with pretty, his money. Pretty reasonable. Yeah. I mean, he he was one of the highest paid guys in wrestling yeah. in the in the. I'm gonna say, you know what? Probably even even in the '80s, he was probably one of the highest paid guys in wrestling. He'd be up there. '80s, yeah. '90s, and even like into the end of WCW, he was probably the highest paid guy in the company. Like other than Nash and, and, Hogan. and Hogan, right? Yeah. But I mean, he was. Uh, if he's, uh, he seems like a guy who's smart with his money. He's got kids, yeah. right? And he, he's he's not estranged from his kids, so that's yeah. always a plus. Yeah, um, he hasn't had a bunch of divorces. Yeah, and as much I, I, as a wrestling fan, and as somebody who's been an Undertaker fan and a Sting fan his entire life, I want to see this match. Uh-huh. So I hope that they can make it happen. And also too, I like I don't want to see Sting flounder in TNA for rest of his career yeah. and then retire and never get that e-match but also too he, he deserves to be in the now whether like WWE Hall of Fame I feel like he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame they could and they're not going to do it as long as he's in TNA right yeah. I mean no he'd like, have to assign they did it with Flair but that was only because they were doing the Horseman and yeah. you can't do the Horseman without fucking Flair <laughs> get it <laughs> um, I didn't even intend that joke to happen but yeah that company I'm honestly surprised they still run. Like, I, I, Dixie Carter's family pumping money into that thing. Yep. How do they still have money? They what is the, money. What is their money? Energy. Oh, gross. Um, yeah, that's... I can't believe that anybody in that family... Like, honestly, Dixie, Dixie must be, like, an only child that they desperately want her, <laughs> her like, approval and affection. Yeah. Where it's the point where, like... No matter how much money, how much of their money Dixie loses, they constantly just give her more. Yeah. Oh, and just okay, need, Dixie. You'll do better this year. Yeah, they just need to make her dreams come true. Yeah. Like, it, it's... Uh, and, like, even, like, they've tried... They've had people, so many people in charge of that company, and they just cannot make it happen. Although they had one person in charge for way too long. Yeah. Well... That's, booking-wise and running the company-wise... Um, it got pretty good for like four or six months right after they let Russo go. Yes. In like 2012, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, That's the thing is like they've got, they just don't have, I feel like they just don't have the star power. They don't have the match quality. Um, they have like a few guys who kind of toil around and are, are good, yeah. but they don't have like... A CM Punk, a Danielson, even they don't even have an Orton or a Cena. Yeah. And like they're basically still living off of rejects of other companies, right? They sign ROH guys and bring them in, and then do nothing with them. Granted, they weren't really doing a lot in ROH as much as it's ROH. They're not on a national channel and yeah. you know in front of larger like craft fan base, but they're still living off of Jeff Hardy, you know. Yeah. Bully Ray, even though he's, he's actually become a pretty decent uh, character. Kurt Angle when he's not in rehab. Kurt Angle when he's not in rehab. You know, like, they, they, don't, they don't have that tangible 
thing to get people interested in it. So they either have they have their, their small fan base, and then they have the other wrestling fans who think it's garbage and hate it and don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. And I, it's just, it baffles me that they're not out of business. Like, the, just the, the amount of money they've lost yeah. over the last... Well, if they were a normal business, they would be. Or if they had somebody like a Vince McMahon running the company. Yeah. Somebody who's... Okay, a, a younger Vince McMahon. Not yeah. the current Vince McMahon, because he's getting old. But, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's... I could not imagine what it's like to work there. Yeah, like, it's I, weird. You know what would be... Like, honestly, right now, with everybody's contract expiring in the E. Do you think he goes back to TNA? You might. I don't know. Like, I, I'm fairly certain that after he left, didn't he say a bunch of shit about them? I think so, yeah. Like, I, I know he doesn't like the travel schedule of the E. But what else does he do? Well, no. Does I, he run his comic book store and that's it? Like, no, I mean, he probably does TNA. Like, the TNA schedule is much lighter. Yeah, but if he hates it there so much... Yeah. He really has no choice, though. That's the thing. Is, are limited. I mean, I honestly don't think he, he would be over in Japan. I don't think. Like, he's not really... No. He's not really their kind of thing, right? No. I mean, but then again, I didn't think Shelton was kind of their thing, but yeah. but I mean, I don't He's know. Like, I, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that could go to New Japan and do New Japan matches. Yeah. Right. He's, he, his style is too WWE. Yeah. So I guess it's it's hard to say what he'll do, but I would hate to see him go back to TNA and do nothing. Yeah, which is possible. <laughs> But we would get to hear Van Assassinator, so yes. I am kind of okay with that. It's not a total loss. Um, but yeah, so anything else you got? You want to uh, jibber-jabber some more? Are you good? I think we jibbered pretty good. We yeah, hit our, our spots. Kept it a tight six hours. Uh, we are at an hour and 41 minutes. Made pretty good time driving. Yeah, that flew. That's the whole drive an hour and 41. Yeah, that's well, pretty good. Sweet. Um, I, th- I think I'm good. I think we... Yeah, I think hit, we got a lot. Hit everything I wanted. Hopefully, some point on the rest of this trip, we'll, we'll record in uh, I Suck Dick's Heart Cinema. Yep. Maybe we'll do some uh, some Fast Five, some fun games. I do enjoy fun see games. See if we can get a couple of our road buddies to do it. Maybe yep. uh, if we get some time with Steve or Josh or the Chicago guys, if they're around enough, or yep. maybe we can get something going. We'll get, we'll get some more stuff done. We'll, this will be a productive weekend. Uh, well, until next time, and enjoy, I hope you enjoyed listening. Um, and I don't really, we don't really have a sign-off for this one. Do we just do shitheads? Do we do, we do shitheads? I don't know. I, I think we did shitheads last time. Uh, like last time we recorded a wrestling one, I think we did uh, do shitheads. Okay. Well, I guess we can do shitheads. All right. Um, until next time, Chris Frank is a shithead. And Kurt Angle's left arm is a shithead. <laughs>